bring up Blender's preferences, make sure you are in the add-ons tab and search for decal machine. The first thing to be aware of is the location of the decal libraries. By default, decals are located in the decal machine slash assets slash decals folder. To change this, click on the folder icon and choose another folder. All existing decal libraries will be copied to that new location automatically. You can also reset it back to its default location in the decal machine folder. If you consider future updates to decal machine, where you would remove the old version first, I'd say it's a very good idea to choose a custom location to avoid accidentally losing decals you have created. Alternatively, it's also a good idea to do regular backups of your libraries if you add to them frequently. If you have created your own decals in the previous version of Decal Machine, refer to the Update Legacy Decal Libraries video for information on how to convert them for 2.80. Next, you can see a list of all currently loaded libraries from the location specified above. The example panel's library is hidden by default. This is intentional because they are decals created by the Sliced tool and are not brought into the scene like other decals, only their material is appended. The order the libraries appear in the list is the same order they will show up in the Pi menu as well. You can change that order using the arrows to the right. Note that the layout in the Pi works using columns. Libraries can be renamed, and I suggest you rename the My Decals library to something more descriptive. This library is empty, with the exception of the Blender logo. And it's the only one you can add decals to, which you can tell by it not being locked. You can clear the list, which can be useful in preparation for reloading libraries. Clearing them does not delete anything, it just resets decal machine's knowledge about the libraries. Reloading libraries is done when you have changed decal files or folders on the disk, while Blender is running, or when you change the sorting setting to the right. To delete a library you can press the red button. Careful though, this permanently removes all decals contained in it, so I'm not doing it now. There are two ways to add a new library. Either by importing an existing library from a zip file or folder. Maybe one shared by a friend or colleague. Or you can create a new, empty library. To do so, switch to empty and enter a name, then press return. The library appears immediately in the Pi menu, but doesn't contain any decals of course. To import an existing library, it must have been created in Blender 2.80. For older ones, check out the Update Legacy Decal Libraries video, as mentioned earlier. Before I continue, I want to advise against deleting either of the two example libraries. Example panels should stay hidden anyway, but if you don't want to use the example decals, I suggest you just hide that library as well. Deleting either of those may cause problems, so avoid it. Also, make sure there is always at least one unlocked library present. As for keymaps, decal machine uses the D key for its Pi menu, but you can change it to whatever you like. There's a new control D key map to very quickly insert the same decal used before. And there's also a new way to select all an object's decals by double clicking. For multiple objects you should click in the background. Remap this if you use the 2.80 key map which unselects if you click in the background. You can also set the tool to keep the parent object in the selection. There are a number of ways to customize the appearance of decal libraries in the Pi menu. Most importantly, you can now determine how many rows of libraries are used. This can be pushed pretty far, if necessary. It depends on the actual amount of libraries you have of course. Two is a great value for the start. You can change the size of the library icons in the Pi, as well as the size of icons inside the libraries themselves. Decal names always start with a three-digit number, making sure they are sorted consistently in the order of creation. This order can be reversed, so the newest decals are always at the beginning, instead of at the end. Don't forget to reload the libraries, if you change this setting.
If you want, you can display a decal counter for every library next to its name. You can also display decal names under their thumbnails. As well as on the insert buttons. Some of the tools in Decal Machine use a modal HUD to display information and modify tool behavior. You have some control over how that HUD looks. For instance, you can choose to display or hide hints, which are especially helpful in the beginning. In addition, you can adjust the font size, which is also affected by Blender's resolution scale preference. Finally, change the main font color to your liking. I mentioned it in the installation video, but if you intend to create and share or sell decals, definitely adjust the creator line. And always save your changes, when you are done.